everyone, welcome back. So last time I just briefly mentioned what second law efficiency is. And the big concept here is it's just a better way often for us to compare um, our system and see how it's doing. Like for example, right here, I have two systems, two heat engines. One has a max efficiency of 70%. That one has a max efficiency of 50%. Now that is the best they can ever do for those particular inputs and outputs. So for that particular source and sink. Wonder where that comes from? That's the you know whole um, Carnot efficiency, where efficiency is equal to one minus T low over T high. So that is the best it can do. 50% in one case is the best it can do. 70% in the other. So my question then is, how well am I doing if I have a system that is 30% efficient? Well, you're probably already kind of figuring this on your head. You're saying, well, you know, the 30% efficiency is the same. However, in one case, you could have been doing 70% efficient. In other case, you could only be doing 50% efficient. So it seems like in case A, you had a better system. In case B, it's kind of lackluster. And so what you're doing right here is you're introducing second law efficiency. It's a way of us comparing our system to the best possible system. Like, for example, if I'm trying to figure out how fast I am, I don't compare myself to the Flash from, you know, comic books. I compare myself to Usain Bolt. He's the fastest man alive. He's the best. And so the closer I get to that, the better I can tell I'm doing. I'm not looking for some unattainable goal of getting, you know, running 40 yards in 0 0.01 seconds because that's not realistic. I'm trying to run it as fast as he is. And will I ever? No, goodness no, because I don't have the time, ability, or athleticism. <laughs> But that's okay. So all second law efficiency is simply comparing and saying, how close am I to the best case scenario? So let's look at it for these two cases. So for this case on the left, my second law efficiency would be using this one on the top. It's going to be equal to 30 over 50, which is equal to 60%. So I am 60% of the way there to being the best possible system ever. Now, how about in the other case? Well, in that case, I've got 30 over 70. And let's see, I actually had that one printed out here. So that'll be 42.8%. So you can see the second system is not nearly as efficient as the first because it has a lot further it can go. It has a lot more improvements that can be made. So second law efficiency is also good for figuring out where can I make improvements in my system? And there's once again me just showing you that again. I just take whatever my efficiency is and I divide by the best possible efficiency. Now as a note, this can also work for coefficient performance, for your work, input or output. All of that can be used. I'm just trying to figure out what is the best case and how close am I to that. Okay, but this whole chapter is about exergy, right? So what about second law efficiency for exergy? Well, there's two different ways I can think about this. For example, um, I can either say, okay, how much exergy did I recover, which you're more or less just saying, well, how much work did I do over how much exergy was expended? And that'll be your work plus any exergy destruction. The other one you can do is simply say, okay, it's equal to one minus my exergy destroyed over the exergy expended. So that would be exergy destruction on the top. And how much did you expend? Well, that's your work output plus the exergy destruction. So if you know those two things, you can solve for your second law efficiency in terms of exergy. And something to be thinking about, because this happens all the time, is that the second law efficiency for any naturally occurring process is zero. So if I have hot water going into the atmosphere, well, it does nothing. All of my exergy is destroyed because it doesn't produce any work there is no exergy recovered. And so because of that, I'm losing all of the work potential. None of it is used for something I want it to be used for, which is why hot coffee cooling is not a fun thing and why we put it in thermoses so it hopefully will stay hot for a little bit longer so we can enjoy it in the way it's intended. Okay, that's it for this time. Just remember second law efficiency, I'm using the best case scenario. I'm comparing myself to that rather than just impossible standards. Thanks for listening, and next time we'll do a problem with this.
Have a good day. Bye-bye.